Okay, so this is Leavenworth. Um, it's got this kind of like German type architecture and they got all these Christmas themes going on. But it's, um, it's not actually like an authentic design. It was, um, some people just decided they were like, hey, let's make this place look like it's a German town or whatever. So it's not, um, it's not real, <laughs> but it's still a really cool place to see. There's another place like this over on the East Coast in Georgia. It's called Helen, Georgia. It's a similar thing. You know, that the Helen was a mining town. This one was a town that railroad workers used. So they kind of served their purpose when there was mining happening and there was more, you know, and the railroads were being built and people were colonizing this side of the country and such. And then after that, these towns, they kind of fell into like, no one cared anymore, basically. And so the way they fixed that is they just kind of rebranded them and turned them into these little tourist type attractions. But anyways, it's a really pretty place to see and they do, it has kind of taken on its own little culture. They have lots of like Christmas festivals. There's even this store here that like always sells Christmas stuff all year round. So it's, it's a neat place and it's real pretty with all the mountains in the background. I mean, it's an awesome place to have a city or town or whatever, regardless of whether or not it's real. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, back home, I work in TV. A lot of times it's sports broadcasting that I do. So we do a lot of events that are outdoors and we have to set up cables, run electrical cables, lower voltage audio cables, video cables, fiber, all that stuff. Um, so all that to say that I, I do know a thing or two about how to do it safely without stuff, you know, getting wet, short circuiting. Even if it's kind of a not ideal situation, like what you're supposed to do when you're putting cables and stuff outdoors, where they're gonna be exposed to elements. And, um, that right there, that is not, that's not how you do it. Anyways, I know they have a lot of lights here and stuff at night and that's also not safe, but um, that's kind of the thing I'm waiting around for now. So, so a few hours before sun goes down, I'm just gonna hang out here in the town or in the van or whatever and come back out, get some photos of uh, all the lights once they get everything going. I've heard it's really crazy here around Christmas, like they go all out with Christmas trees and stuff and lights everywhere. I'm sure it's real pretty. I'm kind of curious now though, I'm going to walk around and check out all these electrical hazards. See, right here, you uh, you go out that and then you close it. That's what you do. <laughs> Alright, so that one has a little bit of a, of a cover on it and that's understandable. Like those really thick gauge cables, they're kind of difficult to work with but there's still like open connections like that. You gotta put some plastic around it and e-tape it. Unless you're buying like actual waterproof tape, the best tape you can use is electrical tape or e-tape or whatever you wanna call it. Um, Cause it's pretty much waterproof, water doesn't really affect it. So what you do is, is you get plastic, you can take like, a plastic bag or something, wrap it around your connections and then e-tape it. So it holds it together. So you can kind of waterproof where you're connected, you know, to um, electrical cables or, or what have you. And again, the stuff I'm talking about is stuff you do in like a pinch because we have to set up entire fields in like an hour or two for it to be broadcast ready, right? That's a whole other thing. So what we're doing isn't like the safest thing or the most permanent thing, it works. But these are like permanent installations and they just got like extra cable dangling around up in the trees. Like, what? <laughs> Look at this crap. It's not even like a little bit okay. <laughs> This place is gonna burn down. All right, so there's been a rather drastic change in plans here. We're heading north, very north north. I'm, I'm heading up 17 right now and then gonna be going up 97. So this is like straight to Canada. We're going to Oro Village, Oroville, that's what it is, Oroville. Um, apparently the sun decided to have an aneurysm a little while ago, which means northern lights are, pot are gonna be visible. Now, this, this, this applies to everywhere here in the um, Pacific Northwest-ish area. And this applies to a couple states, like uh, northern Idaho, northern Washington, and northern Montana. Montana is really the best place to be seeing it, um, but it's also very cloudy, like everywhere right now in this area. 
the only sliver of area where there's really going to be no clouds during this event is where I'm going around the Oroville area and then just south of there. But I'm trying to go to Oroville because I want to get as close to Canada as I can so that I have the best probability of seeing the lights. Also, in addition to that, there is a blood moon tonight and it's the and the moon is the closest it's going to be to Earth for the entire year and there's a lunar eclipse out here on the west coast. All these things are happening all at once. It's insane. I'm not going to be sleeping tonight. This is going to be a this is going to be an all-nighter. Well, I found this uh, random little backcountry road. I think it's on ranch land or something. There's a bunch of cows around. It's just a gravel road. It goes up a little further, but I think it just gets further lodged back in the mountains. Um, sun's setting over there. It should set about in that area, which is about where the, the lunar eclipse will be as well. North is that way, and I got this hill in my way, so I don't know if this is going to be a good spot. It's nice because it's off the beaten path and, um, you know, it'll be dark skies, but I don't know. I may, um, may head north from here and see if I can't find something better. I think I'm going to finish driving a little bit of this road just to see where it goes. Yep, so the conclusion is this road is a little bit too extreme for me. <laughs> so, um, until I get something with a four-wheel drive that's not a soccer mom van and has road tires on it, I'm not gonna try this stuff. It's fine, it's gravel, it would honestly probably be totally alright. But, you know, it is It is gonna rain a little bit before the clouds clear up later tonight, and it's in the middle of nowhere, and I have no signal, and I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm gonna head back and drive a little further north and see if I can't find somewhere else to pull out. I also just feel like I'm on someone's land. I mean, there's like a hiking trail up the road a little ways. That's how I found this. So, I mean, it's a public road, but it just, it freaks me out. I feel like some dude's gonna walk out here and be like, what you doing out here, boy? With like a double barrel, and, and I'm not, a, I don't wanna deal with that. <laughs> All right, so here's the new, much better option. There are some buildings around, so there's a little more light pollution, but, you know, it's a solid road. There's a little trailhead over there, so I, I'm good to park here and stuff. That, like those hills right over there, that's Canada. So this is about as far north as I can possibly be. Well, a sheriff just drove past me. So, whereas this is a little less secluded and I have cell signal and things like that, it also is a little bit more like, if I'm not supposed to be here, then, then Ian's gonna get a ticket this evening, but. You know, whatever, it's fine. All right, so you gotta know when to fold them. Um, doesn't look like I'm gonna be getting the Aurora Borealis tonight. Anyways, um, where I'm at right now, I'm, I'm kind of in like a canyon-ish, or valley rather, so I can't really see the horizon really well, and there is still the blood moon with its lunar eclipse and all that jazz going down in about, you know, an hour and a half or so. So I'm going to drive back south. There's Plus, I need to get south anyways to get to a Walmart so I can sleep a little bit later. So I'm going to head that direction and see if I can't find some area to take a few photos of the, of the moon when it eclipses and such. Kind of stinks that I missed the aurora, but I, I, I may have a chance at it tomorrow night and it should be clearer skies in Montana, so I can head that way up towards Glacier National Park. So we'll see. We'll see how this all works out. I I'm learning so much about the Aurora and like, you know, it's so confusing. You look on these apps and there's like all these crazy, like scientific -y mathematic numbers. I don't even know what they mean. All it has to do with magnets and gravitation and the sun, I don't know. All right, so um, that was the lunar eclipse. Right when it went into like full-on totality, it kind of fell behind the clouds on me, um, of course. <laughs> but I got a couple cool pictures of it looking all red and lunar eclipse-ish, so not bad. <laughs> 